Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so today, so today's scripture reading is going to be from t- uh, Matthew ten forty through forty two. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of righteousness. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to, to one of these little ones in the name of the disciple, I truly tell you, none of these will lose their reward. So, first off, I want to apologize. My uh, video is a little dark. Uh, we've got a window behind us in our office, and so it makes it a little bit darker. And as the day goes on, it tends to get a, a little bit better. So, I apologize if... Uh, from time to time, it gets a little dark uh, based upon our room setup. So, so t- today's message is um, focused around hospitality and the welcoming of others into our homes, into our lives, and into the interactions that we have on a daily basis. Um, you know, I think it's probably um, safe to say that over the last 90 to 120 days or so that um, hospitality is probably something that us as a group have all been missing. Uh, We've been lacking that interaction. We've been lacking that opportunity to be able to uh, fellowship with one another. And so uh, initially, as as I was beginning to prepare for this, I'm like, well, this is somewhat of a I don't want to call it a wasted topic because of the current environment we're in right now. And I was kind of struggling with it, but as I began to kind of formulate my plan and kind of talk about it, maybe it was more of an opportunity to set the stage as a springboard into, as we begin to uh, go through our reopening activities over the next several months. Uh, When you look at, um, discipleship in general, uh, when your heart is not necessarily in the right place, it becomes very, very difficult to be in, in a hospitality mindset. And, and so really the, the, the heart, the, the, the main, uh, the main point of what we're called to do from a discipleship standpoint it is to be uh, is to be welcoming to others, uh, open our homes, open our lives to those others to be to have that communication to be able to open up to be able to share uh, God's message to others. But it all starts with hospitality. And over the next thirty to sixty days, you know, I was very encouraged when I heard uh, Larry earlier talk about that. You know, uh, we've been asked to, uh, you know, late July we'll be able to open the church back up. I was very encouraged that we'll be able to begin to have some of those hospitality type activities again that we've all been lacking over the past 90 days or so. You know, when I look at um, uh, this morning, when I was looking through the the grid of all the you know, all the individuals that are today here, um, I saw a mass collection of hostess. Uh, this congregation. Um, does a phenomenal job in, uh, in hostessing and hospitality and taking care of others and uh, uh, having those interactions that um, are, are the key to disciples. So I feel like in some, in some ways I'm preaching to the choir, but maybe hopefully uh, this will be a, a springboard into new safer hostessing activities uh, as we move forward. You know, um, I, I, uh, for me, there's been um, a, a particular group of people. I'll, we'll, we'll just, for, for, for namesake in here, we'll, we'll call them Kim and Steve. And uh, they're some good friends of, of our families. And when I look at hostessing to the, to the um, what I would consider hostesses, I've always considered Kim and Steve as two of those individuals. And if you knew the whole backstory uh, between uh, Kim and Steve and, and our family and all that they've been through in, the, in, in their lives, um, it, uh, 
you would think that they would probably be the last person that would be hostess. Um, you know, uh, Steve, um, in, in his ver in, in his first marriage, uh, Steve's always been a mentor of mine over the past 15 years or so that I've been in the industry that I've been in. And Steve has always taken me under his wing, given me guidance, given me recommendation, put me in situations to be um, uh, for opportunities of growth and to show my talents to other people. But if you knew some of his personal life and, um, you know, lo losing a, a, a child um, just before their 18th birthday and um, the, the, the breakup of the marriage that came because of that. And then you, you look at uh, Kim, who's just a phenomenal individual, but was unable to have uh, kids of her own. And uh, her previous husband divorced her because she was unable to have kids. And then those two together were able to um, create a marriage that is, it's a phenomenal marriage and the way they work, the way, what they do for other people. Um, it's just, you never expect with some of their background, uh, they, they could be very hardened in individuals and, and not want to help out based upon some of their life experiences. You know, Kim is a, um, a, a, a child advocate for, for kids that are uh, battling terminal diseases uh, it, it, as, a, um, as a volunteer. Um, but when you, you start to look at, I've always looked at them as true hostess. Um, when, um, you know, TJ uh, hurt her ankle here about uh, 60 days or so ago in the middle of this whole COVID process, uh, we're all supposed to be, you know, quarantined and, and, and very close and, and not getting out of the house. And, um, you know, we were reached out to by Kim and Steve and they asked if they said, hey, we know, we're, you know, we've been quarantining. We know that you guys have been quarantined. We'd like to pick up dinner and come over and sit and have fellowship with you guys at your house. And um, it, it was just it was one of those things that it, it kind of took me off guard based upon everything that was going on. But yet they still found a way to come over and to reach out and minister with us for uh, several hours that evening in, in the backyard, all socially um, distanced as much as possible. Uh, but but just the fact that, you know, when, when times, when they knew that there was an opportunity when, when she was down uh, to, to come and assist. Um, you know, yesterday we got a, a photo from Kim and Steve at their lake house that they had just received their, their book of uh, uh, all their family photos. Uh, and in their family photos, they chose a picture of our kids to be part of their family photo. And they're just phenomenal hostess in the way that they uh, always invite uh, and take care of people. And some of the things they do uh, as far as it is centralized around inviting people to their home on a very, very regular basis because they enjoy that, that hospital, hospitality outreach. I want to read a, a, another scripture here, um, specifically from the, the book of Luke, uh, 10, uh, 25 through 37. And I know this is going to be a very common uh, scripture that you all have heard before, but I think it goes uh, right along with the message of, of hospitality. So Luke 10, 25 through 37. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up, st stood up to test G Jesus. Teacher, he asked, What's, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus responded, what, what is written in the law? H how do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your, all your strength and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was once going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levi, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity upon him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil, pouring on oil and wine. Then put the man on his donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two, uh, two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said. 
and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which, which of these three do you think the neighbor was to the man who, who fell in the hands of the robber? The expert in law required, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. So when you look at uh, that, that particular scripture, um, you know, it reminded me of a, a time when um, I was, we were still doing the, the, the South Texas mission trip. And um, this was actually my first year going back down as a counselor. And uh, we stopped in, I believe it was Waco overnight or, or, or uh, Dallas. I can't exactly remember wh wh where it was at. But oh, in, in the evening, no, I take that back. We'd actually already made it all the way to South Texas. Um, and we had parked and we were uh, moved into the community center. And overnight that night at some point, point in time somebody broke into our bus um, and in that process of, of breaking into the bus they they literally broke the door off the hinges um, and it was a, a pretty significant event because uh, literally we couldn't drive the bus because the doors were broke off I mean we couldn't um, just from a safety factor it, it was not um, not possible and um, Part of this mission trip down there was working in in, in homes and um, tr attempting to uh, better the life of individuals and uh, that uh, we were working with and it was a, a through outreach international and um, it just so happened that the group that I was working with the home that I was working with the individual that we were helping their home that we, that we were laying a tile floor. And um, it just so happened that the, 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 the male figure in that family happened to be a welder. And um, so he found, so as we were working on the floor, uh, later that day, he found out, because we, we didn't have to use the bus throughout the week. Uh, he, he, we didn't speak, we spoke English, he spoke Spanish, but somehow we were able to begin to communicate that the bus had been broken into the night before. And, uh, he immediately stopped. He had us stop, and uh, we, we took him to the bus. We, we showed him what we happened, and um, myself and him actually jumped in his pickup, took the door to, to his shop, and we welded uh, the door back together, and it, even though we could not communicate with each other, but we were able to weld it back together to the point that we could actually make it home safely. And we were there helping him, but yet he stopped and paused us in order to help us. And in turn, that evening, um, as the, the kids went back to the community center and, and we were, myself and my mother were cleaning up, he, um, they were beginning to get dinner ready and they asked us to stay for dinner and have dinner with their family. Now, this is a family that, um, you know, by all accounts has very, very, very little uh, many meals are consisted of rice and beans and we didn't want to uh, take from them of which they couldn't have but if we also did not want to offend um, the offer that they had that they had made to have uh, myself and my mother attend dinner with them and so we we accepted and again even though we could not speak um, um, the same language as each other we were able to communicate and just the fact that they open their house from a hospitality standpoint is something that will always sit with me. It will always uh, guide me in, in, in my life uh, from a discipleship standpoint. Um, so, and, and you know, um, again, as we begin to op um, go through this um, opening up process again, it was, um, you know, this past Friday night, uh, TJ and myself had an opportunity to go spend some time with our cousins, and um, you, you know it was it was interesting because as some of the individuals um, as we were on the way home, uh, we were mentioning the different names of the individuals that we talked to more on Friday night that we had ever talked to um, in our uh, adult um, times with, with these cousins. You know, I don't know if it was the the, 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 the 90 days being apart and no communication, but just to have all the cousins together and be able to have some of the, begin to have a uh, break bread and have that hospitality back again 
was such a warm and inviting feeling. And I, and I told TJ on the way home, I said, you know, that was, that was a lot of fun. We, we need to do that a, a, as often as possible and as quickly as possible again. Um, I want you to think back to the last, and, and this, the number, this, this could be uh, based upon where we're at, it could be a, a while back, but think of the last time you invited a friend over to your house, not a family member, okay? A friend, somebody that, that's, um, that's not necessarily related, but that you're close to. Um, it, 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 it may have been the first time since we've been opening up the campaign. It, it may have not happened yet. It was prior to, but, but think of that, that last warm embrace, that last enjoyment of having a meal, uh, with somebody, um, you know, th this, this, this week for me was, uh, particularly challenging. Um, I, I came down pretty sick on Wednesday, uh, this week and uh went uh went in and uh they requested that i uh, quarantine myself even from even from my family so wednesday thursday friday i was basically quarantined away from the family and um i was super you would think with a four-year-old and three-year-old uh getting the opportunity to be quarantined into the bedroom office with a tv that that would just be an absolute um uh, safe haven and, and, and sanctuary of, of just total rest and relaxation. And I'm going to be hundred percent honest with you. Uh, it was tough. Uh, cause I could hear the kids, uh, downstairs, uh, laughing and playing and having a good time. And I was like, wow, I really miss, uh, that time interacting with my family and, uh, ha having that, that human contact, whether it was family, friends or not, um, uh, that, that that was uh, very, very difficult for me. And, and for us to all survive, that human interaction is very necessary. Now, we have to be very safe about it uh, in our current current point, but, but, but needing that interaction back, back and forth. You know, for me personally, um, uh, uh, there's a, a lot of people that don't, um, I'm not the most warm and fuzzy person on the face of the earth, put it that way. Uh, some people think I'm difficult. Um, some people have other choice words for me. We'll leave those aside at this point in time. But I am not the easiest person to get along with. I, I fully admit that. But for me, hospitality starts with cooking, per se. Um, I love to cook. I, <coughs> excuse me. I especially love to smoke meat on the cooker and open up our home to um, people coming over with ribs or chicken or pulled pork or brisket or uh, different things like that. That, that is my personal trait from a hospitality standpoint. It's not, I'm not going to be the first person to run up and give you a big hug and want to have a huge conversation. Um, until you get to know me, I, I, it takes some time for me to break down those walls and begin to have that conversation. But, but food for me is that hospitality piece in, in that breakdown of that barrier. Um, I, one of our, our um, we were having a, a birthday party for, for all of here a few weeks ago and, uh, TJ sent out a message to everyone that was coming. She goes, Hey, just, you know, for those of you that are starving yourself, um, uh, don't, don't, don't be disappointed when we didn't cook meat this time because it's so hot outside and things like that. Um, and it, it, to me at the end, I was like, man, I really kind of missed that piece of that, um, interaction because that, that, that's how I break down and begin to have some of those, the, the, those conversations. Um, so, you, you know, uh, my, my challenge to you all today is um, whether you're, you're, you're still uh, keeping that distance from everyone, uh, make sure that you're still picking up the phone, uh, sending cards to those that, that, that are uh, sick. Uh, FaceTiming is, is a wonderful thing to be able to have those conversations with each other. Uh, Zoom church sessions to where we can all see each other's face. Um, but when, when you're comfortable and everyone's ready, uh, I, 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 and, and, and if you've not had that first uh, converse time yet from having somebody over or going to meet with someone, uh, cherish that moment, cherish that opportunity, cherish that, um, that invitation uh, when everyone's ready to be, begin to have that hospitality point again and be able to, and it doesn't necessarily be, need to be you, but sometimes you need to be the receiver as well. And, and uh, embrace that moment and look forward for that opportunity so that um, uh, 
we can all begin to disciple and fellowship with one another. So with that, uh, thank you, and I look forward to seeing you all again face to face, hopefully sometime in July, and we can break bread and have hospitality again with each other.